This 3D printer is the Creality Ender 3 V3, but there's something different about this one. Hello drafters! About four years ago I was about to start a degree in industrial design. One of the key tools to industrial design is a 3D printer. So I began looking into getting one for myself so that I could use it for my university projects. Everything pointed me towards the Ender 3 V2 as the perfect entry level 3D printer, so I bought one and that started my 3D printing journey. It was a great little machine and it also taught me a lot on how to tinker with 3D printers. And it wasn't too long before I added a BL touch, an auto bed leveling, and an OctoPrint server to set up live camera feed and enable Wi Fi printing. I've long since moved on from that printer, but when Creality reached out to me and asked if I wanted to test out their latest Ender 3 V3, I thought, why not? I wanted to see how far this series had come and how it fits into today's market, which has changed so much over the past couple of years. But there was one thing that really drew me to trying out this printer, and that's because it's the plus version, with its 300 by 300 by 330 millimeter build volume. Before we get into the technical details, let's chill out for a bit and watch the process of unboxing and assembling this printer. So this is what the Creality Ender 3 V3 Plus comes in. As you can see, it's all pretty well packaged in a fairly large box. So let's get into cracking it open. Once we remove the first layer of styrofoam, we'll be greeted with the first lot of parts, such as the instruction manual. Now let's speed this up a little bit, but we're going to be removing various parts such as tools, holders, braces, the main gantry itself, and the main body of the printer. So here's the main body of the printer, and going through the instructions, it tells you how to put it together. The first thing we need to do is connect the spool holder to the side of the gantry, and then we just drop the gantry onto the main body. It's screwed in on the sides of the gantry to the main body. And then if we flip up the printer on its side, we'll get access to the two screws on the bottom. And that's it. It's just four screws on each side of the gantry and the body of the printer. And that's the bulk of the assembly. But because this is the plus version, there are also some braces we need to put on the side. So these screw with two screws on the side, and this will just add extra stability to the printer due to its extended size and height. Now all we need to do is connect the connector to the front screen, and then that just slots in place. And also the satisfying removal of the film. From here, we can start attaching all our cables and routing it along the printer. And there's also some connectors, one for the filament runout sensor, one for the left side stepper motor, one for the rear stepper motor. Also on the side, you need to make sure that the correct voltage is set. So if you remove the sticker and look inside this small square area, you'll be able to see a switch. Just make sure that it's connected to the right voltage. Now we can put on some Bowden tube holders, which just thread through and help attach and run the cable along the cable next to it, just for a cleaner look. There are some zip ties provided in the tool set, so we can just tie this cable down, which is connecting to the hot end. And there's also a small cover that goes on top. Then we connect our power cable, connect it to the wall outlet and switch it on at the back. Once we do that, you should see the screen start up and you can go through the setup process. The setup process is pretty straightforward. Just follow the prompts on the screen, connect to your Wi-Fi, and you can also connect to your app to register the printer to your account. After that, it will do a self-diagnostics. So just run that and it takes about 10 to 15 minutes. So while it's doing that, we're going to open some filament that Creality provided to us. So running this through the filament sensor, waiting until it comes out the other end of the Bowden tube. And then we can stick that into the hot end and let it start to draw through into the hot end from here. And you should see it extruding from the bottom. Once it's finished extruding, you can clean up the mess that it leaves and we're ready for printing. So let's try something. Let's do the typical Banshee. 
So this Benchy is just stored on the machine itself, so there's no USB needed at this point. And we can just run this off and start printing. So it's going to take about 14 minutes. As you can see, the printer's running quite fast and it's on a fairly unstable table, so it's rocking around quite a bit. So I recommend having a very stable surface for it to sit on. And after 14 minutes, here's our finished result. So as you can see, it's pretty good quality, although this model is set up for speed printing, so you can't expect the best quality. But for a test print, it's a good result. Well, I hope you enjoyed that as much as I enjoyed putting it together. Overall, the assembly process was pretty easy, although I felt that the instructions were a little vague or just didn't quite line up with what was required to be done. So I found myself often looking back at the instructions a few times trying to figure out what the step was trying to explain. In the end though, as you can see, it's all put together and it's working. Now onto the actual specs of the machine. The most obvious point is its build volume size of 300 by 300 by 330 millimeters. Due to the larger bed size, the Y-axis motors have been beefed up to heavy duty motors. Support braces are also in place to ensure the frame is rigid. Creality claims that the Core XZ moves up to a max speed of 600 millimeters a second and a max acceleration of 20,000 millimeters per second squared. But those are just limits, and the typical printing speed listed is 300 millimeters a second, which is still pretty fast. The print head is the same one that is found on the K1C printers, which Creality says offers reliable, clog-free extruding. The nozzle design allows for super easy swapping and can reach temperatures of 300 degrees Celsius. There are two fans on the print head front and back to help with part cooling. The gantry and base are both single die cast aluminium pieces, allowing for simpler assembly, fewer bolts, and more stability. It's capable of printing PLA, PETG, TPU, and it could print ABS and ASA, but those would require some sort of enclosure. So it's mostly a PLA PETG TPU machine. It comes with a magnetic attached flexible build plate, which looks to be a textured PEI plate. I had no trouble printing PLA and PETG without any glue on the build plate, and all the parts released easily once it had cooled down. There is also a 4.3 inch touchscreen, which is responsive and easy to use. Overall, some compelling features, so let's continue and take a look at the slicer software. Creality Print 5.0 is the latest slicer software from Creality that is compatible with this printer. If you have used Orca Slicer or Bamboo Studio, then this software will be quite familiar as it's basically just a reskin of those. There are plenty of settings to dive into and fine tune your work. It's possible to set it up so you can print over Wi-Fi and it, that was a bit fiddly as you first need to add the device to the cloud software and then get an IP address and then add it to your local software. But once you've done all this, you can continue to add more printers for multi-printer management. Overall, I think the software is decent but lacks a bit of polish. Hopefully with time, improvements will make it better. For instance, it's little things like when you print over Wi-Fi, it's just a little button that says LAN printing. And then next to that window has a few options that say send G-code and one-click printing and multi-machine. And it's not really clear what those buttons do. So my first attempt was to just hit the send G-code, which just sends the print to the printer without actually printing it. Since nothing happened, I then used the one-click printing, which sent the file and started the printing process. I think these buttons are just kind of like translated poorly or something. It's also a bit annoying that once the print is sent and it starts, the window just stays there with no real obvious sign that anything has been sent. If you're not around the printer or have a camera connected, it might not be obvious that anything has actually happened and that it's now printing. Now onto the print results. One of the good things about this printer is it's really fast. We have certainly come a long way when comparing it to the Ender 3 V2 that I used to own. The quality has been reasonable. I'm sure with some fine tuning of settings, I could get better results. For instance, I was excited to use the larger build volume to print out a large plate of some keychain designs I have. But the end result had a lot of stringing, blobbing, signs of under extrusion, and all this meant the whole print was binned due to quality issues. This may have been due to moisture in the filament, so I decided to give it a test by loading the filament on my Bamboo A1 Mini, and the result was perfect. I then went a step further and decided to dry the filament first, but also copy the PLA settings from the other slicer in Bamboo Studio over to the Creality Print slicer, and this time the, the results were better. I think with some playing around with the settings, I could get better results, but I'm a bit annoyed that it takes this extra effort. When using this other printer, I don't have to do anything and I get the results I want first time. But with the Ender, I have to spend time fine tuning things. If the goal is to be a beginner level printer, then it needs to be streamlined in this area to match up to the competition. 
Let's focus on some of the positives of the Ender 3 V3 Plus. The machine itself feels very solid and premium while being at a price that I would consider an affordable price. There are other large format printers and they cost a lot more than this one does. The nozzle heat up time is really fast, probably faster than the other printers I own. The print volume is really great for filling out the build plate with lots of small objects or large size prints such as masks or cosplay items. It also prints quite fast. And then there are other features like automatic bed leveling, filament runout sensor, Wi-Fi printing, all built into the printer without needing additional modifications. Overall, it's a big upgrade over my existing Ender 3 V2 that I used to own. Let me be clear, this is a good printer, but to be fair, I need to point out the things that I like and that I don't like, so here are some of the things I don't like about it. At the end of the print, the bed moves forward, which covers the front display if you're looking down. This isn't a huge thing and nothing can really be done about it. It's just a bit annoying since you have to push back the bed every time so that you can interact with the screen. The spool holder system is also really basic and it can tangle or skip over the side of the spool. While they do provide a spool adapter that is supposed to reduce this issue, I can't use it because I need to place the printer on a board to fit my working area due to its footprint. The board raises the printer off the ground a bit and the spool adapter actually needs to touch the ground below for it to work. So currently I just print without the adapter on and I have to keep an eye on it. Additionally, the filament also needs to be loaded manually, which just feels a bit primitive for where 3D printing is at these days. As mentioned, the footprint of the printer is quite large, but you also need to account for the additional depth of the movement of the bed, since it is a bed slinger design. This means that the bed moves forward and back, extending the footprint working area to actually 700 millimeters. The reality is that this printer needs a working area of 700 by 700 by 600 millimeters. And yeah, it's a large format printer, so it's expected to take up some room. But because of that bed movement and the side spool position, it takes up even more room. Another thing I wanna mention is it's really noisy, like way noisier than my other printers. And lastly, the Creality Print software is just a bit meh in its current state. It works and it's basically a reskin of other slices, but things like bad translations and weird functionality just hold it back a bit. Overall, I think things just need a little bit more polish and I'm sure with updates, this will improve. For an entry level printer, there's still a lot you need to figure out on your own, like my whole print quality issue that I had. As someone with plenty of 3D printing experience, I can figure it out. But for someone that's new to 3D printing, this would have been quite a challenge to them. I'm at a point where I ask myself, who is this 3D printer for? Overall, the Creality Ender 3 V3 Plus offers solid performance and a premium feel at an affordable price. The printer's large build volume is a significant advantage for projects requiring big prints like cosplay items or large prototyping. Fast print speeds and large build volume make it suitable for various projects, though it does require some fine tuning to get the best results. Features like the automatic bed leveling and built-in network printing add convenience, although the setup process for the network printing could be a bit smoother. Creality Print 5.0 has potential, but needs more polish. Its interface and functionality are decent, but it could benefit from further updates and improvements. The printer's overall size and noise level are notable drawbacks, so ensure you have adequate space and can tolerate the noise level if you're considering this printer. Despite some minor inconveniences, the Creality Ender 3 V3 Plus is a capable and versatile printer. It stands out in its category, especially for those who need a large build volume printer and are willing to spend a bit of time on setup and adjustments. With Creality's ongoing improvements and updates, the Ender 3 V3 Plus is likely to become even better, making it a worthwhile investment for hobbyists and professionals alike. If you're looking for a large format printer with good value for money and can handle a bit of the initial setup and tuning, the Ender 3 V3 Plus is a strong contender. So I think that's who it's for. If you're someone that works on projects that would use a large build volume, if you have the space to put the machine somewhere in your work area and you can put up with some of the disadvantages, then this may be your best option for a large format printer. And so that's my thoughts on the Ender 3 V3 Plus. Thank you to Creality for giving me the opportunity to take a look at this machine and for supporting my channel. If you're interested in Creality 3D scanners, you can check out this video here. Or if you want to know how to insert magnets into your 3D prints, then I suggest watching this video here.